Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. Today I'm going to show you my mixer toolbar. It's this sidebar on the left side of my mixer. I've done a video on this topic before, but it was kind of an older method of doing this and I've optimized it and I think it's a little more versatile now. So I figure that's a good thing to show you guys today. The main thing I want to show you is these named buttons here. Uh, things like drums, percussion, bass, guitars. These are filters so that uh, it, it actually searches by name for any tracks that have that in the name and then it will hide all other tracks. So it's a really quick way to navigate through a session like this one where I've got, I don't know, uh, 71 tracks. So in the mixer, I can quickly select all the tracks that have bus in the name or just my drum tracks or bass or just my guitars or my vocals or just my reverbs and delays. I also have buttons for the track manager, the routing window, the monitoring effects window. I have copy and paste effects chains and I have the SWS snapshots window. So let's start off with the most interesting stuff. Uh, these are the custom actions and cycle actions needed to select the track by name and then filter out all other tracks. I am in the SWS cycle action editor. I've filtered my, uh, my list to just show these console commands. And uh, brief aside, uh, the SWS console is a little text box that you can pop up and then you can do different commands for the selected track. So I could press M and then enter and then that will mute the track. M again, it will unmute it. I can press X and then type in recomp. It'll insert recomp on this track. I can also use it to select tracks. So capital S, asterisk, and then uh, snare. And then also put another asterisk at the end. So if snare is used anywhere in the name, that will work. So hit enter. And then uh, it's just my snare bus track that is selected. That's the function we're using, and we're accessing it through the cycle action editor because it can send console commands. To add in that console command, you just right click here, add statement, console. Command we're using is capital S, asterisk, the name of the track, and then another asterisk. And if you just do an asterisk at the beginning, it's going to search just the beginning of the name. For me, I found that if I had a track called drum bus, it would search for drum, but it wouldn't search for bus. So it doesn't work. Having it search for anywhere in the track name works really well. So I've just gone through and made a bunch of uh, console commands for most of these. So bass, guitar, bus, uh, synths, percussion. And so once you add these to the cycle action editor, hit apply, they'll come up in the action list. So in the action list, I type in console again to filter out what I have here. And then there's select bass track, select bus track, drum track. And these are, these are the same actions here. We use this to get them into the action list. From the action list, we can add these to custom actions and toolbars. All right, so that's the cycle actions. And now I'll show you the custom actions that those cycles or the console commands actually go into. And I like to have these separate so that in the future I can use again these actions to select the tracks, perform some other action to it. I think having it a little more modular is helpful here. So I have a custom action show guitar tracks. It looks like this. It's going to run that console command. It's going to select the children of selected folder tracks. In my basic track template for starting a mix, I always have a track called guitar bus. So this is going to search for a guitar. It'll select the folder track first. The child tracks are usually whatever, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the names of the tracks that were sent to me were. So it's going to select all the children of that track while keeping the folder track also selected. It's going to show selected tracks, hide others, and scroll track view to home, and then select the first of the selected tracks. So it's doing a few different steps there. It's selecting the track by name, selecting all the children, if that is a folder track. It's hiding all the other tracks. Then it is scrolling back to the top of the page, so that track is in view. And then it is also selecting just the first track in that selection. I think it's a little more convenient 
to have the, uh, the folder track as the selected track. So that's that one. And there's one that's a little bit different. So the, uh, the show bus tracks, the only thing different with the show bus tracks action is that it's not selecting all of the child tracks at the same time. Just anything with the name bus in the title, which should be all of the top level tracks that were imported through my template. From there, we get into the menu editor and I've got this on toolbar eight. So copy effects chain is actually the SWS copy effects chain for selected track and paste effects chain. It's, it's just the, uh, the SWS paste effects chain paste effects chain to select the tracks. That saves me some time when I have, uh, I've got one effects chain that I like for this track and I wanna copy that to four other tracks. Copy it once, select the other tracks, hit paste and it works. Monitor window, this is a script that will uh, show and hide the monitor effects window because the default action is just to show the effects window. Then there's a routing window, one view show routing matrix window. And that one's a toggle, so you hit it once and it will show it and then hit it again and it'll disappear. Track manager, yeah, and then again, that's a toggle, one of the built-in actions. And then there's the all the custom actions. And finally, at the bottom is open snapshots window. I went through and renamed all of these. When you import those actions into the toolbar, it's going to start with whatever that action was named. For me, I thought a double width toolbar with just a simplified name in all caps is going to uh, work the best. So you just type in the name, the new name that you want to display in the button and the double width toolbar button, and then click OK. So this is something that I've been using for years and it saves me so much time and it really helps me focus on a particular set of tracks that I'm thinking about at that time. So if I'm listening to the song and I'm thinking, oh, I need to turn the snare up a little bit, I don't want to like scroll through all the tracks uh, because in this project there's 70 tracks. And even though I have them colored by a certain way, it, it's, it can still be hard to, to process that information as you're scrolling through the tracks. So instead I can just quit, hit drums and I know that the snare bus is probably um, after the kick and then I can adjust that. I can adjust the EQ on it do all these sorts of things uh, in an instant. And then I can work on the bass and I can work on the guitar. And um, when I'm automating different things, it's really helpful to have just what I'm working on at that moment visible and kind of hiding everything else. And so that's it. It's a little effort to get going, um, but it's going to save you so much time. Think about what things you can template, what things you have in every project Make up the action so that you can show just that track that's always in your template. It saves you so much time when you're mixing and it really helps you focus and stay in the creative mindset. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. You can support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.